what's good people it's about that time to randomly relate reverse ranch no hate so i did a number of videos on canelo alvarez and how people feel about his comments and what he's doing right now in terms of not wanting to fight mexican fighters and yet he's the champion he's the face of boxing he's the undisputed super middleweight champion and a lot of people don't like what he's doing and saying so nobody stays on top forever and at the end of the day how you feel about a person whether you like them or not doesn't change the reality of what's happening some people accept anything a person does and what you guys need to understand is when i make comparisons i'm strictly making the comparisons off of what things that you guys say your actions towards other fighters Okay, how you bury one fighter for doing a particular thing, but then praise another fighter for doing it and then say shit like, oh, but such and such did it. What the fuck they got to do with him? Okay, and for the record, if you really think about all these predictions and which is why I don't really do predictions and people ask me who do I think is going to, I don't know. Because I simply don't know what a guy is going to do when he shows up for a fight. We can watch fights. I mean, I mean, you see it all the time. History repeats itself positive, in a positive way for people and in negative ways. How many times did you think you had a sure thing? Like, nah, he's going to beat this guy. And all of a sudden, that guy shows up and does nothing. And you're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Was it that his opponent was just better than people thought? Or did he just have a bad night or whatever? Now, let me give you an example. Try to find anybody that you can convince that Anthony Joshua had a bad night against Andy Ruiz. And we know what Sarafina said happened, right? But how many people have you heard just straight up say, nah, man, Anthony Joshua was concussed and this and no, no. The most you hear is he just wasn't right. You know, we heard rumors, but they don't get into it, right? And what do they say? Anthony Joshua sucks as a fighter. Anthony Joshua, he's a disappointment. Oh, he can't fight. Oh, Wilder would beat him. Fury would beat him. Now, everybody would beat him, right? Now, this is all based on what? This is all based on a man that people felt like he wasn't as good as his buildup. Even though he's a two-time unified champion. Now, when I say, what was Fury and Wilder and everybody else doing who was in boxing years before him as a pro? But they didn't unify and become undisputed, right? Fury was never undisputed. He was unified because he beat Vlad and Vlad had multiple belts. He didn't go after champion after champion and try to become unified. That wasn't his whole thing. It was about beating Vlad. Then all of a sudden, he never gave him the rematch. Now, am I lying when I say he only defended his WBC against Wilder? He has a history of, okay, once he gets a good significant win, he just disappears. Am I lying when I say that? Okay, then. When I say Anthony Joshua got to a certain level when he lost to Andy Ruiz, it's like his confidence wasn't the same. He's no longer that fighter he used to be. And where does it seem like he could add what he learned that he could do? He learned he could fight on the back foot. But he doesn't know how to mix it up. He doesn't know how to attack and retreat. He doesn't have a solid ring IQ. Anthony Joshua is the heavyweight that I pushed to beat all the other heavyweights. So now people that's Anthony Joshua fans are going to say, oh man, you hating on Anthony Joshua, so I'm lying because I'm speaking on what I see. When I sit here and say, Jamal Charlo, clearly, clearly, is making an excuse to not fight Demetrius Andre. Because at the end of the fucking day, like I said in the last video, okay, I'm repeating myself because people ask questions and it's like, if you watch the whole video, why are you even asking the questions that you're asking? Okay, and I'm not angry at you guys. I want you to hear me because I don't have time to sit and text all of this. I, and I respond as much as I can. And I'm right now, I'm, 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 I'm relaxed. I'm going to the gym in about an hour whenever, when, I, when I'm done with this video. So I want to get this in early. 
when you hear me say something good about a fighter, it's because of what he's doing. If I say something bad about a fighter, it's because of what he's doing. I really, really speak about a fighter. I never speak about a fighter saying, I just don't like the fighter. Oh, and it, no, I may not like the fighter's skill set. And I'll be honest and say that shit. I'm not going to going to sit here and play kiss ass for people. Oh, I don't want to say that because I don't want to offend no. Yo, I do want to offend you. Meaning if, I, if you're offended by me speaking the truth, speaking, you know, my opinion, then get offended. It's not going to change anything. Now, when you hear me say these things, okay, and then it's proof of, then it doesn't matter. Like, you might not like who won the fight. But he won the fight. You might not like the way the person won the fight. But he won the fight. You may not like the person's style. But guess what? He still won the fight. So to say, oh, I don't think he won because the way he fought. Oh, he was, the other guy was bringing the pressure. Okay. You don't get points for walking forward. You get points for landing punches. And if you're walking forward... Throwing a lot of shots and missing and getting countered, even if the shots is not taking your head off. Are you not being outpointed? How many fights have we seen where a guy was doing incredible body work and the judges for some reason just didn't notice the body work? And you're like, how? How did that guy lose that? No, right? Okay. If the judges want to see more violence, more viciousness, and this guy's coming in throwing a bunch of punches and it's like, okay. This dude do 900 punches and this motherfucker don't have a scratch on his face. And he's a power puncher. How do you explain that? Okay. But his face is all swollen, busted up. From a guy who didn't throw as many punches. Opinions. Okay, well, I think he won. It's, it's opinions. How biased you are versus how honest you are about how you feel is something, can be something different. Now, let me just read some of the comments, okay, and, and, and salute to all of you, so there's a guy, TDC LLC, salute my brother, now his comment was, okay, the guy you were talking about was Avni Yadrim, or Darim, I know he's talking about now, okay, okay, he was Canelo's sparring partner, and Canelo fought him for the belt instead of um, David Benavidez, politics stopped David versus Canelo for the WBC, okay, and basically, that's the guy that fought um, Chris Eubanks Jr., who everybody verbally crucifies. He's not shit. He's trash. He's garbage. He's a disgrace. Oh, I'm pretty sure his father's upset. All this stuff that you guys say. Now, if you're not saying that, then obviously common sense, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Don't think because you're reading the comments or watching, you're watching my video going, but Aries, I didn't. Then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to those who said this shit. And it was many people. And they're right here in my comment sections on my videos. If he wasn't shit, okay, Chris Eubanks Jr. And Chris Eubanks Jr. gave this guy a proper ass whooping. Why in the fuck would you want to see Canelo fight that guy? Because I'm pretty sure, okay, if somebody put Chris Eubanks Jr. name in the same sentence as Canelo, especially at that time, you would have laughed your ass off. What? <laughs> Chris Eubanks Jr. Ah, oh, that fucking bum. Basically, at the end of the day, that same guy that Chris Eubanks Jr. beat soundly, there was a poll asked about, because I know what happened. Benavidez got stripped of his title for, for not making weight. So when I'm telling you guys, like Canelo went from 160, went straight past 168, went to 175 and fought Kovalev, am I lying? Okay, see, I have to do this because you guys listen to parts of sentences. You hear one thing and your mind is triggered to just ask a question, but it's like, listen to what I'm saying before you start making comments because it's like you still don't understand the point. Nobody's here to bash Canelo's career. You can never take away what any fighter has done. It has nothing to do with what you're doing now. So when I say Unless a fighter is making an exit strategy, he knows, all right, man, I only want three more fights. And he don't have to come out to the world and say that. But he knows that, right? Your exit strategy may not be what everybody wanted to be. But you know what you're doing and then you're gone. At the end of the day, if you plan on sticking around, 
and you're called the face of boxing. You have a bullshit title that allows you to duck your mandatory. And I don't give a fuck who you are. It just happened to be Cano at the time. Okay, if it was another fighter, I'd be saying the same thing about that fighter if they was doing the same shit. You have immunity with this franchise bullshit belt that you can decide, I want to go to 160 and fight Charlo. I want to go to 160 and fight Benavidez. I want to go up to 175 and fight Better BF. I want to go to heavyweight and fight Uzi. You have the immunity to do that. What you did was you went up in weight to 168. Gallum, Smith, Joe Smith, these dudes are decent fighters. They're, they're not A-level guys. Simple, right? No problem. It's still another accomplishment added on your list. Example, when people talk about Pernell Whitaker fights, you want to know the one fight they never talk about? When he went up to 154 and fought Julio Cesar Vasquez, who was a champion at the junior middleweight division. They never talk about that fight. In fact, go on YouTube. You got to search for that shit. You never see that fight pop up, do you? And all of you watch boxing, so you know the algorithms is like, oh, okay, boxing. So it, how many times do you see that? And you don't hear them talk about that. You want to know why they don't talk about it? Because even though it was an accomplishment, Terry Norris was the man at 154 at that time. They asked him, do you want to fight Terry Norris? He said, no. So I, I just came up here, you know, just for an accomplishment. I didn't, I'm not staying here at 154. I'm, I'm going back down. I just came up here just for the accomplishment. And the fight with him and Terry never happened. I don't give a fuck who you think would have won. This is what people kill me doing. They, but this guy would have beat. I, nobody cares about your fucking opinion. Okay, my opinion is my opinion. You fuck my opinion. Okay, at least I can say my opinion is based off what I really feel, not who I want to lean towards. Okay, but it's not about my opinion. My opinion is an opinion. Your opinion is an opinion. Our opinions are not facts. You can't argue facts. You cannot debate facts. Okay. Opinions are going to be subjective all the time because there's no one person dead or alive that everybody agrees with what they say and feel. We know the facts when we get the results. Now, unless there's a robbery and, and, and you have some people who <coughs> they're OK with the robbery because their guy got the win. All right. Well, there's not the there's not the first time somebody got robbed. in the, But you're happy about that. No, I wouldn't feel good if I know somebody really beat me, but I got the decision. And Sugar Ray Leonard is the only fighter. And I'm not saying there's, there's nobody else who admitted it, but I haven't heard him. Sugar Ray Leonard is the only fighter I've ever heard admit. He said, as far as I'm concerned, Sugar Ray won, Tommy Hearn won. I think Tommy Hearn should have got the win in the rematch. That came out of Sugar Ray's mouth. I've never heard another fighter say that shit. Okay. So, David Benavidez. Is at 168. Canelo has no intentions on fighting nobody at 168. When he gets stripped, all of a sudden, guess what Canelo goes? 168. And that guy, Avni Yadirim, or however you say his name, somehow, who who's beaten no fucking body, is his mandatory. How? How? No different from fucking Dominic Brazil at that washed up state. In his career at the time, somehow became Deontay Wilder's mandatory. Berman Stavern, by doing absolutely nothing, became Deontay Wilder's mandatory. Trevor Bryant and fucking Berman Stavern fought for a vacant title. Like, of all people, Berman Stavern was ranked like number two by beating nobody. Joe Joyce whooped his ass and Joe Joyce wasn't even ranked. Am I fucking lying? Okay. So because I'm pointing out shit Canelo did or is doing or a situation that's not right because Canelo's involved, don't get in your feelings. If you do, you just do. I look at the reality of what's going on. Now, that's what happened. And he goes to 168. And then all of a sudden, he unifies. Now, look at his own words. He's not going to fight a Mexican. Which means, let's just say, if he 
was to fucking go to 175. And let's say he collected titles there. You mean to tell me if Zerto Ramirez had one of those titles, you're not going to unify because you don't want to fight a Mexican, which means he'd rather be stripped. Wait. So that's 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 what that went. That, that's what that was. OK, that's what that was. And he ends up now, it's not Canelo's fault that the guy ended up being his mandatory, but there was a poll taken. And this is why I blasted the WBC for that shit. The poll, nobody wanted to see Canelo fight that guy. No fucking body. Canelo had like 6% out of 100% vote. Nobody wanted to see Canelo on that guy. But somehow, this motherfucker became Canelo's mandatory. Okay. Now, Abel Perez, salute to you. So, his comment is, Thing able, you put a couple of comments. Your comment said, You do speak facts, my brother, but one thing I gotta say is if Canelo fights Andre Charlo Benavidez, you gotta give that man credit. But as of now, I think Canelo is delusional. I agree. Now, let me say this though nobody, again, is taking credit for what he's done. Now, if he fights Canelo, if he fights Andre, and he fights Benavides. Win, lose, or draw. You get that man his credit. Oscar De La Hoya tried to fight everybody. Win, lose, or draw. That's why Oscar De La Hoya gets credit. Not only was he a great fighter, but he fought the best fighters that was in his era. You never fucking heard Oscar De La Hoya talk about, no, I, I you know, I, 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 I don't want to fight another Mexican fighter or, or whatever. You never heard Felix Trinidad talk about, I don't ever want to fight another Puerto Rican fight. What the fuck is that? Huh? Muhammad Ali, one of the fighters came up in a racist fucking time. You didn't hear him fucking talking about, I don't want to fight another black fighter. No. And even if they had it, did that shit. Different eras of time, people see things a certain way. But me being who I am, the way I, I wouldn't agree with that shit either. I don't give a fuck who that is. And I agree with you. But at the same time, right? Let me read another one of your comments, Abel. <laughs> and I, I want to read this comment that you put because I want you to understand. See, your own words. Okay? You said if he fights Andre, if he fights Charlo, yeah, right? If he fights um, Benavidez, right? We got to give him his credit. We already give him his credit. Like, 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 like Jose said. I respect what he's done, but I don't respect him now. He's scared. The way he, this is bullshit. Nobody wants to hear that. Now, this is the other comment, Abel. And like I said, salute to you guys. Salute to you. But listen, you put, I'm not a Canelo kiss ass, nor Charlo or Andre fan. I'm Mexican-American, man. I'm not racist, and I don't speak on feelings, bro. I'm a real boxing fan, but Charlo has it for anybody, and that also includes Andre. It's very true about Canelo Alvarez, though. I didn't like what he said in the interview about him not wanting to fight Mexicans. That means that he is scared, and how come Andre is ducking Johnny, Johnny back, or however you pronounce this guy's name? I don't know why Andre is ducking that guy. I guess Andre has his eyes on trying to get what he feels is a bigger fight. That could be it. I don't know. But you said that Charlo hasn't fought anybody and that includes Andre. Then if that's the case then how could you give Canelo credit for fighting two guys that fought nobody? It's the same thing as fighting Billy Joe Saunders. It's the same thing as fighting a Callum or Joe Smith. Who have they beat? Caleb Plant was up and coming. Caleb Plant only had one real credible name on his resume. So if we're going to play that game, then it's like, then what does the victory mean if those guys didn't fight anybody? See, this is what I'm saying when you guys say things. It's like, you got to understand. 
I hear what you say. But let me just say this, okay? Charlo can fucking fight. Andre can fucking fight. Caleb Plant can fucking fight. Okay? Smith is decent. You know, he's, he's decent. Nothing special. He's, he's decent. He's one-dimensional. Decent. Billy Joe Saunders is... He's not on this... Look, he's okay. Billy Joe Saunders is okay. All right? He's okay. He's... He's he's good, but he's not on he's not Canelo type good. Okay, put it like that. I don't see him beating Charlo. I don't see him beating Andre either. I don't see him beating the Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Saunders. So this is what I'm saying. When you when you say a guy hasn't fought anybody, that doesn't mean that that guy can't fight. What happens in okay? What what happens in that situation is the guy who faced better competition usually can adjust better. Some fighters are just special. Some fighters are different where they can make the adjustments that you don't think they can because you haven't seen them do it. This is why they call fights upsets. Okay? So you can't say they haven't fought anybody, but then say you got to give him credit if he fights them. That's the same way how when I made the, 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 the um, you know, the example about people saying that Anthony Joshua ain't shit, Right? These are the same people that were saying Usyk doesn't belong in the heavyweight division. He's not a real heavyweight. He's going to have problems when he fight these big guys. And then all of a sudden, because the only two people he fought as a heavyweight was Witherspoon and um and uh Del Boy. And everybody was talking about how gassed he was and how, yeah, he was running all over the ring from um Us uh, from um from Del Boy and um Chisora and all that. And, they felt like he wasn't going, he didn't belong there. And that was the words that from Tony Bellew on down to all the, the fight fans, everybody was saying Usyk is not going to make it as a heavyweight. Now, all of a sudden, Usyk is amazing. Usyk is from another planet. Usyk is unreal. Well, who did he beat for y'all to say that? The same fucking guy that y'all saying ain't shit. He's overrated. He's stiff. He's a robot. He's a bodybuilder. Y'all didn't say that when he beat Char on uh, uh, um, Chisora. Y'all didn't say that when he beat Witherspoon. Y'all said that shit after he beat Anthony Joshua. So, so, so if Anthony Joshua ain't shit and is overrated, then that means Usyk's win is not that special because he just beat an overrated guy. You understand my point? You can't fucking, the guy ain't shit, but yet because he loses to Usyk, Usyk is from another planet. Usyk is out of this world. Usyk, in theory, the two best heavyweight. Whoa, then How? How? If he beat a fighter, that's not shit. This is the shit I'm talking about. I defend logic and reason, not the fighter. The same fucking way you hear me saying what I'm saying about Canelo. You hear me saying what I'm saying about Charlo. I like Canelo as a fighter. I like Charlo as a fighter. I like Errol Spence as a fucking fighter. Did you not hear the videos when I'm saying Errol Spence put his foot in his mouth and he's making a hypocrite out of himself by saying... He wants to fight, you know, um, 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 Terrence Crawford. He told Terrence Crawford to go get a belt first, right? He said he hadn't done anything yet. Get a belt and we can fight. That's your word. So we're holding you accountable, right? Errol Spence says this. This is the Red Hoodie video, right? Where he actually gets confronted by Crawford and they're talking back and forth. And then he like, so when are we going to fight? He said... Some some response he had and yeah well we he's like no nah, you said we got to he's like he's like I got a belt now you said you said go get a belt I got a belt out of nowhere Earl Spence says Sean Porter got a belt too why not take the easy route and fight Sean Porter this isn't Aries words this is Earl Spence words did I not chew his ass out for that like that's some bitch shit. Why not take the easy route and fight Sean Porter? But you told Terrence Crawford, go get a belt first, then we can fight. I like David Hay as a fucking fighter. He was getting stalked by, let's go, champ. Champ. Remember that shit? Fight on my undercard. If you win, 
then I'll fight you. Shannon Briggs fought on his undercard. They both got early knockouts. Fight never happened. Just saying, okay? And it, and, and it basically, for people to say, oh, you hate no Errol Spence. Well, you're just a dumbass. Because Errol Spence is the fucking fighter that I'm pushing for in that division. Whoever Errol fight, I'm rocking with Errol. So I can't be honest because I like Errol as a fighter. I'm supposed to just, nah, that's not me. I don't kiss nobody's ass, man. So same thing. What I'm talking about is what's happening. Not concerned about how you feel. Not speaking off emotion myself. Speaking about the reality. And I don't understand. That's why I say I don't understand some of these comments and questions. Like if you watch the video and you don't understand what I'm saying. Okay, cool. So I'm taking the time to address this. So no, you can't sit here and say, see, it's hypocritical to say if he fights those guys, you got to give him credit. But then say they ain't fought nobody. That makes no sense. Those guys are great fighters. Look, I think Ryan Garcia is a good fighter. I think Roddy Romero showed that he does have some skill. He still loads up too much and try to depend on just throwing power shots. And, he, and you can telegraph that shit. He's like, he, he doesn't have good fundamentals. But, you know, he showed that he, he does have some fire in him where he can go and he has dog in him. Put it like that. But he's not polished as, as, he, as polished as he think he is. Okay? I think Tiafimo Lopez can fight. Okay? Devin Haney can fight. Tank Davis can fight. Let's look at that situation, though. You got people saying, Devin Haney, oh, he's boring. Oh, Devin Haney, oh, man, don't nobody care about Devin Haney. No, the problem is the fighters know that that motherfucker can box. And they're, they're not afraid of, oh, he might knock me out. No. You know what it is? They know that motherfucker is a hard puzzle to solve. Shit. They don't want to fight him. Simple. Simple. Now, when I say, yo, Tiafimo Lopez stood there and shook Bill Haney's hand on fucking camera, and everybody can pull it up and see it for themselves, if you didn't already, promised Bill Haney that they was next. And you hear Bill Haney, you know his back, his big mouth. So you 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 telling me, you saying right now, you shaking my hand, you saying that we're next. You and that, yeah, yeah, send the contract, yeah, send the contract. Am I lying? Okay, then. Did Tiafimo Lopez's father not shake Bob Aram's hand and promise Lomachenko and him was next? Am I lying? Did that fight happen? Okay, then. Did Tiafimo Lopez not out of his own mouth say when he was asked about Devin Haney Fighting against Kembo says, fuck him, fuck him, man. This shit was a setup. They did this from the beginning, it was a setup. Because they knew what I was about to do. The zone knew I was about to drop the belts and go to 140. Ah. So that means you never had any intentions on fighting Devin Haney at 135, even though you shook his father's hand and promised. That means you never had any intentions on rematching Lomachenko, even though your dad. Shook Bob Aram's hand and promised that that fight was next. Am I fucking lying? The problem is people don't want to fucking handle the truth. That's the deal. They can't swallow that pill called the truth. This is not Aries truth. There's no such thing as my truth and your truth. The truth is the fucking truth. Today and fucking America, it's Sunday, September 4th. That's not my truth. That's the fucking truth. Now, if you live in a country where it's 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 Monday already or whatever, okay, cool. Different for you. But y'all got the common sense to understand what I'm saying. There's no such thing as my truth. No, that's the truth. Now, all the little details of why these fights didn't happen, we don't know all the ins and outs, but we do know that Tiafimo Lopez's own words makes him look guilty than a motherfucker because he said... The zone already knew what I was about to do. I was about to drop the belts and go to 140. So they set this shit up for Devin Haney to win, which made zero fucking sense. First off, if this was set up for Devin Haney to win, Devin Haney would have never accepted that bullshit fucking horrible bargain that he was given. That 
I'm going to fight you in Australia. Win, lose, or draw. Rematches in Australia. Win, lose, or draw. I get the lion's share of the money in both fights. Who the fuck does that? Am I fucking lying? Because that's what was said. I'm repeating. That's why I play video so you guys can hear it. And even though I do that, some of y'all still like, yeah, but, yeah, but what? You hear what's coming out these people's mouths. What are you questioning? Okay. Okay. Okay, another one from Abel. Salute to you, Abel. Abel Perez. To be honest, Canelo for Austin Trout, which most people know he lost that fight. He was 22. Well, Fredo Benitez was world champion at 17. Floyd Mayweather was world champion at 23. Mike Tyson was world champion at 22. Muhammad Ali was world champion at 22. So what? So what? And he's the face of boxing? And you guys are making excuses about what his age was? He also had 40 plus fights on this belt when he fought Floyd. Well, you got guys now who's 20 something fights in. And guess what? Those motherfuckers, undisputed champion, and not even on people's pound for pound list. So what did so what did that mean? He was only 22. And? And? <laughs> Yet he goes up. In a different weight class, he dared to be great. So why couldn't he just been daring to be great? Fun factor. Listen to the commentators when Floyd fought Shane Mosley. You know what they were saying? People were saying Shane Mosley's a different type of challenger. He had just beat Margarito. So basically they thought, and Shane said it himself, I'm going to be too much man for him. I'm going to set traps. He's going to set traps. And when he said that, like, yeah, you know, he caught Floyd with two good shots the whole fight. Rock Floyd. Floyd showed a solid chin because even though he got rocked both times and, and understand those shots didn't come far apart, too far apart. So Floyd showed us he always had a, a solid chin. Held on. Got his bearing like he was supposed to. But he was walking Shane down the whole time. He wasn't going back, but he was walking him down. Okay. All of a sudden, Shane is old. Okay? Now, I'm making this point. Pay attention. Don't sit here and listen to what I'm saying and have brain fog. Listen to what I'm saying. Not just the commentators, but the fans, the fanboys, the casuals. Oh, man. Floyd waited until Shane got old. Bullshit. Floyd called Shane out when Shane was champion. Shane said Floyd hasn't done enough to earn a fight with me. It's not until he got his ass whooped. He's no longer champion. Now he's desperate. So yeah, he can't stop saying Floyd's name. Shane Mosley, Bernard Hopkins jumps in the fucking ring. After Floyd just beat um, um, Marquez. Interrupted this man. Wanted to make his presence feel, I want the fight. You know the fans want the He came in the ring and begged for that ass whooping. Floyd didn't call him out at that point. He got in the ring. You see how history repeats itself? Am I fucking lying? Go do your homework. He gets his ass whooped. Somehow Floyd waited for him to get old. Okay, how is it Shane Mosley wasn't the same fighter, but a year later, guess who fights him? Manny Pacquiao. And somehow, Manny Pacquiao, just showing levels of greatness. Uh, how? He's fighting the guy that y'all said was a shot old fighter when Floyd fought him. Pacquiao fought him a fucking year later. Now, does that make sense to you? So don't let your hatred for fucking Floyd Okay, don't let that impede your ability to use common sense and think and, and understand reality. If he was washed up and was no longer a good fighter because Floyd, you know, when, when Floyd beat him, 
How the fuck was he a, was a better version of himself? All of a sudden, he was rejuvenated when he got near with Pacquiao, but Pacquiao was just so dominant and great. That's not hypocritical. Wait, there's more. Oscar De La Hoya was still fucking good when he fought Floyd Mayweather. Floyd took all those bullshit terms. Now, I'm just being real. This is not about defending Floyd. Fuck Floyd. Fuck Floyd. I'm talking about the fucking reality. I'm not friends with Floyd. I don't know that motherfucker personally. Okay, I just stick to the topic. To what's really going on. Oscar De La Hoya was the fucking A side. He was the man in boxing. Oscar De La Hoya at that time was the face of boxing, right? Guess what? He fought Floyd. Floyd got the decision. He wins the fight. Oscar De La Hoya goes from saying he won the fight. He thought he won the fight. He thought he was robbed. He thought he was robbed against Shane Mosley as well, right? But then, what is he saying when he's in uh, uh, um, um, Canelo's corner, right? Preparing him to fight Floyd. You can do this. You got this, man. You know, when I fought him, I was done. Come on. I was done. I was done. Wait, you was done when you fought Floyd? So why'd you go fight Pacquiao after you fought Floyd if you was fucking done? Why didn't you just, man, let me hang it up. I'm done. Because for one, you're going to cheat the fans out of a great fight because you're done. So you're going to, that means you went into the Pacquiao fight knowing you were done. You didn't need money, right? You had plenty of money, right? You filthy fucking rich. So what was it for? What was the purpose? You wanted to push yourself to be dead to be great to see if you had one more run in you? But yet you was done when you fought Floyd. Notice when they talk about him and Pacquiao, you don't ever hear that, um, De La Hoya talk about how he was done when he fought Pacquiao. You don't hear him, bro. He's just talking about how amazing Pacquiao is. But his pride, his hatred for Floyd won't let him say. This, you just understand that Floyd was just a better fighter. Wasn't Floyd a much smaller guy that came up and waited to fight him? Why Floyd don't get that excuse about being too small? I'm just saying, I'm feeding off of this shit that you guys say. Okay. Shane Moldy was washed up, right? When he fought Floyd all of a sudden. But he just beat the big bad monster Margarito, right? Okay. Then all of a sudden he goes and fights Pacquiao. But all of a sudden when Pacquiao wins, it's just because Pacquiao is super great. Hold up. Guess who fought him after that? Canelo. And you know what they said? Canelo shows excellent poise. He's so patient. He has... Shows veteran type skills. He's on an elite level. This young man is amazing. Yep. He surely was. And he's still a great champion. Still a great fighter. Guess what though? Shane Mosley didn't get no younger just because he because he because he fought uh, uh um you know Canelo. But when Floyd beat him, it's because he was old. You see, this is what I'm talking about. So when I bring these things up. It's because of what was said and done. I'm not fucking just reaching in the air, reaching for shit to say. No, I'm addressing the comments. I'm addressing the words coming out of people's mouths. Okay. Let me find this one other comment I'm looking for. Okay. Hyper nonverbal. Okay, salute to you. Now, your comment was, are you saying the guys Pacquiao beat, Floyd could beat? Absolutely, I'm saying that. And guess what? The guys Floyd beat, I think Pacquiao could beat at the same time. The problem for me was Floyd didn't fight them. So it doesn't really matter that I believe Floyd would have beaten those same guys. So I'm not going to count it. Okay. That's smart because you can't count it. Now, like if he did or assume he would have, it's boxing fights don't always go the way you expect. And that's big facts. I believe Floyd would have beat all those guys that Pacquiao beat. I believe Pacquiao would have beat all those guys Floyd beat. We don't know that for sure, but I strongly believe that. But that's just my opinion. That's not a fact. So I don't argue and try to go back and forth about that. But let's just understand something. Floyd never fought Vernon Flores, right? Neither did Pacquiao. Floyd never fought Winky Wright. 
Neither did Pacquiao. Floyd never fought Amir Khan. Neither did Pacquiao. Floyd fought Arturo Gotti. Pacquiao didn't. I mean, shall I go on? Floyd fought Sean Bay Mitchell. Pacquiao didn't. He's a former champion. You understand what I'm saying to you? So for every person that you want to count that Floyd didn't fight, that, that Pacquiao did fight, you got to look as a flip side. It's the same thing. Floyd fought Zab Judah. Pacquiao didn't. Now they both fought, they both fought Mosley. They both fought Ricky Hatton. They both fought De La Hoya. You understand? They both fought Marquez. Okay. You want to know what's so funny? Let me show you favoritism. Now people always say, yeah, but see, Pacquiao, he beat um, Ricky Hatton in a more astonishing fashion. I mean, he jumped on them guy out in a couple of rounds. Fact though, Floyd gave him his first professional loss. Knocked him the fuck out. Maybe he was never the same after that. That could be it, but does it matter? No. Point is, a win is a win. They always say, yeah, but look. Floyd went the distance with, with, with Delahoya and, you know, like he, he edged him, but it was, it was, you know, Pacquiao destroyed him. Okay. I, I, I can give you that. You know what y'all never say though? Oh, and yeah, but yo, you know, Pacquiao dropped Mosley. Floyd didn't. And you know, he was like really punishing him. Okay. Whatever. What you're doing is you're looking at stylistically who you felt was more impressive, right? They have different styles. Pacquiao, explosive in and out, crazy angles, footwork. Floyd, technical wizard, defensive wizard. Know what y'all never say, though? Yeah, but the one person that gave, you know, Pacquiao his biggest challenge was Juan Manuel Marquez. Floyd beat him with no problem. Made it look easy. You know what y'all say? Oh, he way bigger than him. Yeah, he's well, he's bigger than Pacquiao too then, right? Marquez is too small for Pac for, for Floyd, but, but Pacquiao is it. Did it really matter? No. So when I tell you, no matter who they fought or didn't fight, what happened when they fought each other? That's what matters. That's the point what I'm saying. It doesn't make a difference who you wanted to win or you don't like the way the fight went. At the end of the day, okay, I address the things that you guys say, you know. Now, let me read the rest of your thing. You said, like, okay, boxing fights don't always go the way we expect. True. Without the fights happening, it's all hypocritical. Most of the time it is. Because people just go for who they like, who they want to win. If Floyd isn't that much bigger than Manny, why didn't he go down and wait to fight those guys? Why didn't he become an eight-division world champion? Floyd is great, but Manny's great, too. They're both great fighters. They both have different goals. You understand? It doesn't mean... Okay, that's like saying because Evander Holyfield went up from, from, from light heavyweight to cruiserweight to heavyweight. Bevo thinks, okay, I got to do it because he did it and because Usyk did it. Oh, for me to be considered one of the all-time greats, I got to do... No. That's, that's, that has nothing to do... Everybody has a different direction. Then you got to understand, fighters don't always get the fights that they want, so they got to take who's available. Let's not forget something, okay, too. You're saying because he went up, look at all those weight classes, right? Pacquiao still wasn't the draw, okay, that Floyd was. He still wasn't that, wasn't that, wasn't, wasn't the draw. He still, once he became a superstar, he still didn't make the kind of money Floyd was making. He still wasn't the attraction that Floyd was. He had a country behind him, yes. And Floyd's countrymen, well, they basically on some, uh, fuck Floyd. Okay, cool. It is what it is. But that doesn't mean shit. Okay? Marvin Hagler wasn't the fucking eight-time world champion. He wasn't an eight-division champion, all that shit, was he? But he beat the fuck out of Thomas Hearns. Hearns accomplished more in terms of weight classes. So does that mean that fucking Thomas Hearns was better than Hagler? And you want to know what's crazy? Y'all praise Marvin Hagler, right? Now you're talking about size. Roberto Duran came from fucking lightweight. 
end up ultimately going up to fucking middleweight, which means his body could handle it. But guess what? Wasn't the same when he got the middleweight, was it? Sugar Ray Leonard came from welterweight. What's my point in all that? Marvin Hagler was matched with a bigger guy. And the best wins, okay, on his career, of his career, came against who? The biggest names on it was what? Sugar Ray, Hearns, and Durant. He got some other wins. Mentioned in, 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 in uh, always oh, forget the guy's name. He was throwing the bottles at him and shit when he beat him in the, in, in, in the rematch. Um, But anyway, bottom line. Nobody says, yeah, but Marvin Hagler's best wins came against welterweights and, and, and lightweights. Why? And he never went up. He never did that. Now, when you hear me say, you you guys heard me say, Jamal Charlo has a point in saying he wants to defend his title. The problem with, with, with that is, overall, there's nobody he could beat in his division that's considered a superstar that's going to put bring him to that next level. So the best thing he could do was try to unify the division. Why? Because the, the division is kind of weak in terms of star power. There's some fighters that can fight there, but in terms of star power, he doesn't have that. This game is not always about how technical or how great you are. It's who's coming out to see you. You understand? Can you put asses in seats? That's what it comes down to. This is why, for example... Even though Devin Haney is the champ at 135, everybody is saying Tank Davis is the guy. I like Tank Davis and Devin Haney as fighters. Okay? I'm not, oh, I think, I don't care. Whoever wins, wins. But at the end of the day, it's because they find Tank more exciting. He might beat Devin. Devin might be him. I don't know who's going to win if they fight. If they fucking fight. I don't know who's going to win. Somebody might fuck around that they supposed to annihilate and beat both of them. Who knows? Shit happens. But you know what's crazy? People want to dispute if Devin Haney is the man. Give the man his fucking credit. He got the fucking belts. Y'all not disputing if child if 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 if, if, if Canelo is the fucking man at 168, are y'all? Cause he got the belts. That's why David Benavidez is like, let me in. I want to know who's better between me and you. Let's go. And then y'all say there's too many belts in boxing. I agree. I agree. Yeah, there's too many belts in boxing. The only reason you guys are okay with acknowledging Tank Davis having a belt now, see, y'all wasn't acknowledging it uh, several fights ago because y'all was criticizing when he fought Gamboa and, oh, man, he couldn't even fucking finish Gamboa. Oh, he's overrated. Ryan Garcia do this to him. Tiafimo Lopez do this. It's like, wow. It's amazing how y'all just go back and forth thinking one guy will beat one because the other guy beat him. Okay, or because of the way he looked in another fight or how it goes. Think about this. Y'all said the same shit about Devin Haney because when he fought Gamboa, he has no power. Yo, he can't beat nobody at 135. I seen so many of those comments. Isn't it funny how the guy y'all said can't punch and is boring and can't beat nobody is the fucking guy at 135? So wait... I like Tank Davis as a fighter, but you don't need Tank Davis' belt to be undisputed. Example, how are you going to acknowledge Tank Davis' belt, but then say Danny Dubois' belt is some bubblegum belt? Because why? Usyk is unified, Fury is the WBC. You don't need his belt. You don't, you don't need Danny Dubois' belt. Now, am I wrong? Because it's the same exact situation. With the exception of the WBC belt is, is, the, is the fourth piece of that puzzle that Usyk needs. You know, and we know Fury needs the other three. So what are you actually saying? You don't understand? You acknowledge Tank Davis's belt and saying he's a better fighter than who's unified. Who's undisputed. Fury and Usyk is still up for grabs with a lot of people. It's not about being a fan of anybody's. As you guys know, Aries is nobody's fan. So, yes. As far as, this is hyper non-verbal. As far as, as far as Floyd going down in weight, you got to understand something. The highest weight Floyd ever went up to was 154. That's the highest he ever went. 
even at 154. He came in like 151, 152. He never really came in at 154. As far as him going back down in weight, there was, I mean, I couldn't give you the answers why he never went down in weight. But Pacquiao, he didn't go back down in weight. Why, why would Floyd or Pacquiao have to go back down in weight? Pacquiao went up and the highest he went was 147. And he stayed there. He never went back to 140 after that. He didn't go back to 135, 130, 127. What would be the purpose? I mean, usually when guys go up in weight, look, you got to understand, first off, there's no superstars at banning weight, straw weight, fly weight. There's no superstars there. You barely know these fucking guys. People just don't get excited about a 113-pound guy swinging 100 punches. They just don't care about it. You understand what I'm saying? They, you don't. That's why you have a guy that, even if he has a little recognition, he's still no superstar. How many endorsements have you ever seen a banner we have? A flyweight? A strawweight? How many, how, how many have you seen? There's no real popularity in those weight classes. So now you will at least get from lightweight on up. You understand? But they go up because there's less money down there. So what's the purpose? I'm going to go down there to fight who? For what? Like, what's the purpose? I mean, it would have to be some uh, somebody there. Okay. Why don't Terrence Crawford go back down and wait to go, go back to the weight class he came from? I mean, you know, that, 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 I, I, you know, that, I don't, I mean, I, I hear your question, man, but I don't, that, that, what does that do anything? Like, if, if if they went back down and wait, who are they going to go down there for? Like, who's there? You understand what I'm saying? If Josh Taylor started saying, I want to fight. Remember, he was saying he wanted Terrence Crawford. He was saying because they were both unified at 140. Okay. The last fight that Josh Taylor had was a big robbery because he really lost that fight. So he's rematching that guy. Now, let's say even if he was to win. Terrence Crawford is not unified champion at 147. He has one belt. Josh Taylor is saying that because why? He's trying to get more attention to himself. And if he truly wants that fight, Terrence Crawford unified the division, beat everybody that was to beat there and left. What the fuck does Terrence Crawford got to go back to fight Josh Taylor for? If Josh Taylor want that smoke, come up to 147 to fight. You're calling out a man's name that's not even in your division. So a Josh Taylor fan can say, well, if he's not scared of Josh Taylor, how come he's not going to go down to 140 to fight him? What the fuck does he have to go back down there for? That would be the same thing if Terrence Crawford was to tell him, drop your belts and come to 147 so we can fight. That's up to Josh Taylor if he wants to do that. But when you call somebody's name that's not in your division, it's like, okay, we're not even in the same division. What the fuck are you calling my name for? You better worry about re that guy that really beat you in the first place, right? So this is the type of shit where, I mean, that's questions I can't answer. I don't know the answer to why they don't go back. But I mean, I think from a logical standpoint, you know that there's no money in them smaller divisions. And basically, why would you go backwards? That's, that's steps backwards. And now you got to like get back down to the weight that you that you left. And obviously, at some point, they outgrow those weight divisions and they feel more comfortable going up in weight. Terrence Crawford is talking about going to 154 to fight Jamel Charlo. Does he really mean it? Or is he just talking shit? I don't know. But should he be more focused on getting this fight with, 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 with Spence first? But if they can't get it, you got to fight somebody. Okay? If that's the case too. Why is everybody saying Charlo need to go to 168? Simple. Because truthfully, if he goes to 168, he don't have to stay there. This is my whole thing. Hey, WBC, I want a fucking showdown with Benavidez. I don't have a fight coming up. He doesn't have a fight coming up. Can we make that happen? I just want one fight. I'm pretty sure the WBC might say, yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Who knows? This is a legacy fight now. No titles on the lines. Not a title defense, but it's a legacy fight. He can do the same thing with Caleb Plant. We know damn well Benavidez can't make 160. We know damn well Caleb Plant has no interest in going to 160. So the whole thing is Charlo is not calling their names out. It's people calling, asking Charlo about them. And he's saying, ain't nobody scared of them and this and that. He's not bringing their names up. It's people talking to him bringing their names up. 
That's why I said Demetrius Andre was there. Okay, and, and, and he's saying, did you not hear me in the last video say Demetrius Andre, right? Charlo was saying he's broke. His father, him and his father's broke. They just want to pay that. And I'm like, so what? Let's say if that was true. They won't give him the fight. Why would you not want that fight? Don't try to tell me that Demetrius Andre is not worth it. Like he's not a good fighter. But then you fighting guys that nobody knows. You, In fact, he's fighting a guy that Demetrius Andre beat candidly. So why would you? And then say, he always comes to fight. You know, you know, you know he's a tough guy. Oh, but he lost to Demetrius Andre. So what if that guy's broke too? You gonna not fight him because he's broke? What that got to do with you? All you need is the chance. So I listen. You gotta pay attention, man. When I make these videos, the ones you choose to watch, that's that's not up to me. That's up to you. Because there's a lot of shit that y'all miss that I say. And I and I feel that because obviously if you listen to the videos, you know, like, yeah, he did say this and that. If I'm not aware of something, then that's one thing. But I don't give nobody a pass for bullshit. There's no reason for him to not fight Andre. So the same way, when Canelo's telling Andre, you're a horrible fighter, you've done nothing. Okay, what the fuck did Billy Joe Saunders do? Right? You asked the question about, you know, um, you said that, that Charlo and them didn't beat nobody, but, right? Okay. And I addressed that earlier. Same thing. What did Billy Joe Saunders do so special? Smith and all of them, what, what did they do so special? This guy, Avenia, whatever, Avni, what did he do? So... It's always, look, why accept the franchise championship if you're going to just do the same shit over and over? So I ask y'all this, since y'all defending Canelo, who the fuck would y'all like to see him fight? Are, are you okay with him just holding the belts hostage, fighting a 40 fucking year old washed up Triple G? Did y'all not hear me say, I'm not interested in seeing Triple G fight anybody? Especially elite fighters. Because he's fell off. He's not the same fighter. And if people are thinking that this is going to be some trilogy war and this and this. The only way that I see this fight being competitive is if Canelo slipped and fell off as well. Otherwise, if Canelo is still the same Canelo that even fought Bivol, he should destroy Triple G. Triple G has fallen. And for Jamal Charlo to even say Triple G's name, I said this shit two years ago. For what? Because two years ago, we could see that even three, four years ago, he wasn't the same fighter. So now you're going to fight him and then do what? Have a, a tainted win that people are going to say, oh, man, you waited for Triple G to get old. Y'all could have been. They always want to blame a fighter. You never know who 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 did what. Roy Jones just recently did an interview, and he was asked about guys that he w wish he could have fought. He named several guys and said that any fight that I never had was not because I didn't want the fight. And he talked about the one fight that he didn't want to go out the country because he had got robbed in the Olympics. And he had this feeling like, nah, man, because if I don't knock the guy out, you know, they probably going to rob me. That's normal. A lot of people feel like that. Roy's not the only one. But they all, you always have people where somebody has to be to blame. So they'll blame whoever. Oh, Roy didn't fight this person that, but okay. The correct thing to say when you don't have the information as to why is they never fought each other. Because we don't know why these fights didn't happen. But his story is the fight did not happen because of him. You know, that he was down to fight. Okay, whatever. I don't think he would be scared of no fucking Collins or, or, or any of them other dudes. The dude wanted to go up the heavyweight to fight Mike Tyson. That's the purpose of him going to heavyweight. But then when they tried to get that fight, Mike Tyson was supposed to be retired. Which he wound up coming back. But, you know, so did you ever hear Mike Tyson deny that? And Roy Jones had told that story like 10 times already. So, at the end of the day, as far as guys going up and down and waiting all that, everybody doesn't have the same goal, man. You know, the whole thing is, you know, that's like Sugar Ray Leonard. Just because Hearns went up to all the way to cruise the weight, what, Ray going to try to do it too just because Hearns did it? Nah, I, I, you know, that doesn't make, make any difference anyway because the point is this. Floyd Pacquiao fought Floyd won. Oh, it was a boring fight. Oh, man, it was this, it was this. Oh, it was, okay, whatever. That's beyond, that That has nothing to do with it. The fact is the results are the results. And Manny Pacquiao, if you remember, every time when when when, when, when these guys wanted to fight, Floyd has a fight that he's getting ready to have. They're doing press conference meetings, you know, interviews. 
You know Floyd. Well, Floyd, I know you're getting ready to fight such and such, but, you know, Manny Pacquiao, no, nah, we're, we're not going to do that. We're not here to talk about Manny Pacquiao. I have a fight coming up. Everybody, you know, buy pay-per-view, this and this and this, think everybody, this, you, know, you know how Floyd would do. Every time they talk to Pacquiao, Pacquiao, uh, you know, I know you're getting ready to fight such and such, but Floyd Mayweather, this and this and this and this, uh, are, you know, is that fight going to happen? Is it the fight that you want? Uh, he talked to the managers and trainers. Decide. I, I, I just uh, you know the, the you know the people want to fight, but the the you know the decision the managers and trainers. Now when he got knocked out by Marquez, Pacquiao could not stop saying Floyd's name. Same way Shane was doing. Why? Because now I lost my bargaining chips. I just got knocked out. Now I come back with a soft touch in Brandon Rios. Right? Fans are applauding. They, they cheering because I came back and I looked good in that fight. So, guess what? There's still interest with me and Floyd. So, guess what? Now, he has no choice but to take the terms. And all Floyd wanted him to do. Urine and blood. Yeah, you know, ran, ran, um, um, random urine and blood testing. And he was all, because it's religious belief. Now, this is not fucking Aries' words. This is Manny Pacquiao's words. So, that fight didn't materialize because of that. At that time. Remember the offer that they made, that they gave uh, Manny Pacquiao? Freddie Roach even confirmed it himself. Yes, they did make an offer. But, you know, and I think like 20 million, he said he would wire him like 15 or something like that, 10 or 15 million. But they offered him 20 million for that fight. And then the fight never happened. Then Floyd went to prison. Floyd came back. Look at what happened three years later. And the fight wound up being worth way more. You understand? That fight being with that amount of money, you don't think somebody said, or Floyd himself is like, shit, I got this kind of money. I got $200 million of $200 million that, um, dollar deal with fucking um, Showtime. I'm getting $300 million in this fucking fight. Then he went and did the same thing with, with Conor. Clearly, what was he doing? Exit strategy. And if I go fight somebody, look, if he would have fought Amir Khan, for example. And that's another thing. Floyd never fought Amir Khan and Kell Brook. Guess what? Neither did Manny Pacquiao. With all along, all the other names I said. So both fighters is in the same position. They fought some of the same fighters, and there's a lot of fighters that they didn't fight. So if you all oh, Peck Margarito fought, but fuck Margarito cheating dirty ass. Margarito was a fucking Margarito wasn't shit but a volume puncher, sloppy fucking feet. You understand what I'm saying? Easy to hit, no defense, just volume, volume, volume. You understand what I'm saying? His best attributes was his, was was his conditioning, his volume, and 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 somewhat toughness. But basically, man, like fucking Margarito, <laughs> fucking plastering his fucking raps and all this. Okay, big deal. Again, same thing. The same way, like I said, there's fighters that Floyd fought that Manny didn't fight. There's fighters that Manny fought Floyd didn't fight. But there's a lot of fighters neither one of them fought. Just like, for example, when he fought Berto, three-time world champion, had three losses on his record. Same exact deal. Is Amir Khan and Amir Khan never fought Andre Berto. Victor Ortiz in the Andre Berto fight. What an amazing fight! What's crazy is how they always say Andre Berto was always in exciting fights, gave him props, called him a warrior. But when Floyd fought him, oh, Floyd cherry pick. You know what? Floyd knew what his plans was. That's why I said, unless Canelo is actually on some on an exit strategy where he knows. That he, but to come out and say, still, if Floyd would have came out his fucking face and said, I don't want to fight a black fighter, you think I'd have been like, well, that's just, I'd have been like, what the fuck are you talking about, Floyd? I'd have been roasting his ass the same fucking way. So don't make this about a, oh, but Floyd and this and that, like, as if, no, no. I'd have been roasting him the same way. Any fighter who, look, put yourself in this situation, okay? Let's put yourself in this situation. Okay, so... Who asked that question, right? That was... Okay, so hyper non-verbal. Okay. So you a heavyweight, I'm a heavyweight, right? Aries Zodiac knocking everybody the fuck out. Aries Zodiac is more than a threat. He's just that guy. Okay. You want to retire, though. But Aries Zodiac is out there crushing shit. Now, you in a position where you got a $200 million deal. You're making an exit strategy. Now, there's other guys that you can fight. But people telling you, yo, 
Stay away from Aries, man. You know, you still good, or whatever, you still, you know, but that dude is, is hungry, he's a killer, man. Stay the fuck away, because if you lose to him, yo, it's over. You about to blow $300 million. Okay, so hyper nonverbal. I'm standing there, and I'm, hey, come fight me, bitch. Right? That's me. People saying you scared because you like, look, Aries is a good fighter. He's solid. He's strong. He's knocking people out. Hey, I applaud him, you know, but when he's on my radar, then I let him know. Oh, you scared. You ducking Aries. But you know, you're not announcing it, but you got two, three, four more fights that you want to do. And you know a loss is going to kill that. Are you going to let these fans who going to forget about your ass eventually? And basically, when your career is done, it's over for you. You going to let those fans, are you going to let those fans talk you in to taking a fucking ass whooping that you didn't need? And now you done left 300 million on, on the table. That was going to lead to another 300 million. And you about to leave this sport a fucking billionaire. You thinking about your kids, your grandkids. That's exit strategies. Now, if you are champion and I'm I'm there and I'm knocking on your door and you have no plans on retiring, but then you say some shit like you don't want to fight me because we the same nationality. Who the fuck you think is going to buy that, man? You understand? You really think that Canelo cares because, oh, they're Mexican. Like, you heard what Jose said in that video. Same thing. You really think he cares about the fucking fighters? Stop it. This is... All the difference, and even like, if you seen, okay, WWE just had an event the other day, yesterday, last night actually, Tyson Fury was in the crowd, Tyson Fury comes out, they were over in the UK, Tyson Fury comes out at the end, Drew McIntyre loses the match to Roman Reigns, right, so Drew McIntyre, uh, Tyson Fury starts singing a song, and then everybody, okay, Tyson Fury, I don't know what his training is like. He's never chiseled up and looked ripped, but yeah, you know, Drew was a lot bulkier, but Tyson Fury, I don't know how much training he's doing, what's going to happen with him and Usyk, if if it's actually going to happen. I keep hearing people saying the fight's confirmed, confirmed. All I heard was a date of December 17th, which was stupid. Then I heard of, uh, I think, a January date or whatever, but my point is this. Why do you think Tyson Fury was at that event? You think that the WWE didn't pay him to be there and coming in and sing and try to get the, okay, because now guess what? His name will come up. And when they put that shit on DVD and Blu-ray, people are going to watch that or whatever, and they're going to see it. And it's like, okay, so Tyson Fury, every, every genre, any a different genre can get different fans who never who normally like. People who don't normally watch wrestling might have just, oh shit, Fury was over there. Different things get people get people's attention. But bottom line, Tyson Fury has content mentioned. He retired before, right? For mental health issues and all that, but still. So there's always a reason. It's something that somebody, whether it's out of fear or whether it's out of just smart thinking, we don't know a person's motives overall. And that's one of the things about like Fury. What's so annoying about him is because instead of Fury just giving you straight answers, he always talk a bunch of rubbish. And it's like, man, you you play fucking head games. And I, I don't have interest in trying to figure out what the fuck you mean. Just simply all this talking in parable shit or whatever. Like just just what what is your do you want the fighter know? And all this, oh, if I fight him, I'm gonna do this. I'll beat him in six rounds. He's a middle. All, okay, are you going to fight him? That's what we want to know. Okay, so if Fury is already contemplating. Okay, what do I want to do? What you think all that connection to the WWE is? Connecting yourself to other things. Why? Because when I walk away from boxing, I want to have the comfortability to know I can go ahead and get a big check. I can go ahead and get a big check. Why do you think these fighters, what do you think that's about? Everybody don't have to retire the same age. Well, how was Rocky Marciano when he retired? 32? Nobody said he retired too, too, um, too early, but people were saying Floyd retired too early, and he was 38. So how did he retire too early? They said the same thing about Andre Ward. No, you retire when you're ready to retire. 
So I'm just saying, it's a difference when you know you're retiring. It's not the same thing. Just like a fighter who loses, and he was once a great fighter. They always want to go out with a win. So they cherry pick. But when you washed up, them cherry picks usually go wrong. And it's like, damn, I tried, but hey, that's just how that goes. So you want to come in and take an ass whooping from a guy because you don't want the fans to think that you're scared. But you've already sat down with your team and y'all talked about another two or maybe three fights. And then you got deals. Look at Ryan Garcia. All these endorsements Ryan Garcia got. Ryan Garcia is talking a lot of shit, calling out Tank because he knows Tank is not going to come to 140. But let's say Tank does. And then the fight doesn't happen. You know that if Ryan Garcia, especially if he gets embarrassed, like he really gets knocked the fuck out. All those Sprite or whatever it is, all these endorsements he got, done. Done. Roy Jones had this shit with Nike and Michael Jordan. Remember that shit? When he got stretched by Antonio Tarver, what happened? He came back against uh, Glenn Johnson. Got stretched again. What happened? Done. That's just the way it goes. And the thing with Ryan Garcia, he's only in his 20s. Well, he's like 20, early, early 20s, right? So he has money outside of boxing that's taking care of him. You understand what I'm saying? So my thing is stop talking shit if you're not ready. To get in and actually fight these motherfuckers. But that's the point of what I'm saying. It's not just straight up boxing. It's something attached to it. When you think in business. The fans might not like it. With certain fighters of course. But then they accept it with other fighters. But what I'm telling you. You can't be an active fighter. You cannot be an active fighter. A champion. An undisputed champion. And talking shit about. You don't want to fight certain fighters. Because y'all the same nationality. That's bullshit. And I wouldn't accept that from no fucking body. Not not my not even my daddy. Nobody. I wouldn't I slap myself for saying some shit like that. That's bullshit. So we all have an understanding, common sense. If you're called the face of boxing, you stand out for a reason. Not oh, based on what you've done. So I've already earned the right to just sit back and hang. No, then let the belts go in. And then you can handpick whoever. If you're not willing to fight the best and defend those titles, and I'm not talking about, like I said, you got you got levels of greatness. Because you can have two A-plus fighters, but there's still a difference between those two A-plus fighters. But if you want to fight a B-minus and a C-plus that has a belt, mm-mm. Just like people saying, like, Anthony Joshua beating Charles Martin. Martin was no champion. Yeah, and that's why that motherfucker didn't want to continue to fight Anthony Joshua when he got dropped. Anthony Joshua's real prize was when he beat Klitschko. And he's a fighter that was still learning on the job, got a late start in boxing himself. You know? Super um, heavyweight gold medalist, but guess what? Guess what? He still was very green. And you've seen him improving. You seen him improving. He wasn't fighting fighters ranked 300 and 400, 100. He wasn't doing that. He wasn't. And that's facts that Deontay was. He was the WBC champion fighting guys ranked in three and 400s. And people, yeah, but you got to understand, he didn't have it. So fucking what? AJ didn't have a long um, amateur career either. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have no super long amateur career. But regardless, he still, they turned pro. Deontay's not the first person that turned pro. Now, I say that they moved him smartly in terms of not trying to put him in there with killers right away, but the amount of shit that they talk and how they always want to insult other fighters and act like they're the only fucking real heavyweight in the division and stuff like that. And then when you take an ass whooping, all this drama and bullshit instead of, yo, better man just won. Not having to hear about no fucking costume being too heavy and all this dumb shit, a long ring work with a fucking costume on that you chose to wear. Making it a racial issue, all that bullshit. Did y'all not hear me roasting Deontay ass for that shit? Same thing. I don't pull no punches with nobody. So I wanted to explain this to you guys because I know when I say things in in text, you, you know, people, you, it's too much to say. To sit here and just text and have to read all of this shit. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, um, yeah, and okay, another one you did, hyper nonverbal about. Canelo fighting Usyk, talk was funny and also disrespectful to Usyk, beating Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Plant, and people believe in that nonsense. Yeah, it, I agree with you 110%.
right? This is what my mind is on that, though. They're hyping him up to be superhuman. People was like, Canelo is God. Canelo is king. Yo, nobody can beat Canelo. But as soon as he lost to Beevil, he was too small for the division. Was he too small when he beat Kovalev? You understand? So when he wins, yay. When he loses, well, it's because he was too young. Well, it's because he was too small. Okay, so if he loses again, what's, what's the excuse going to be then? It, it can never just be that the fighter was just better than him. And let me just say this. And for anybody who don't remember, do your homework. Pull up Floyd versus Canelo. Start looking at these interviews. Start looking at and listen how many people from Jim Lampley, all the so-called experts on down that was saying Canelo was going to beat Floyd. He's too relaxed and poised and calm and he hits hard and Floyd ain't got enough power to hurt him. And basically, Floyd is old. Oh, I see. Floyd was too old, but because he won, Canelo was too young. This is the stuff I'm addressing, y'all. This is the stuff I'm addressing. So if I just give you the fight and the breakdown, and then somebody hit me with a comment saying, oh, but you forgot the one thing, Aries. Canelo was simply just too young. You wasn't saying that before he fucking got in the ring and got his ass, was you? So how is he just too young now? Oh, it y'all just realized Floyd could fight when he fought Canelo? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. None of y'all say he only beat Shane because Shane was old. Right? Maybe he beat Shane even when Shane was, who knows? But y'all wasn't saying that shit. Y'all was talking about how great he was. So was the commentators. That's what I address. So, and again, salute to all of you guys, okay? And I want you to hear me talking so you don't have to imagine what I'm saying in the... No, this is what I'm telling you. All of these situations that, that, that we're talking about Yes, man. I, I I mean, we we look like for example, right? To be honest, Canelo fought Austin Trout. This is Abel Perez. I might have read this one when he was twenty two. Yeah, like I said, exactly. Okay, Wilfredo Benitez was fucking seventeen when he won his first championship. So what? Mike Tyson and Ali was under twenty three years old. So what? Floyd Mayweather was 23 years old. The same guy was, okay, so was, was Floyd too young when he fought Gennaro Hernandez? If he would have lost to Gennaro Hernandez, would y'all have been saying, that, oh, it's because he was too young? Just like, for example, how old is um uh, um, um Cambosa? He's 28, right? How old is, 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 is Devin Haney? 23, right? And, 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 and didn't 23-year-old Tiafimo Lopez take the title away from Lomachenko? Was it because he was too young or because he was just uh, uh, on the better man at night? You see the point what I'm saying? See, it's excuses for one fighter, but not the other. And then, oh, uh, well, yeah, but something was wrong with, 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 with uh, 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 um, Lomachenko. Okay, wait. So now 28-year-old comes in there and he beats Tiafimo. Was it because Tiafimo was too young or just because George Cambosa was the better man at night? Oh, but then, 23-year-old, notice all the 23s? The 23-year-old Devin Haney comes in and beats the 28-year-old George Cambosis. Oh, he was too big for him. Wait, Tiafimo Lopez wasn't way bigger than George Cambosis? <laughs> they didn't say it several times in that fight how big he is to him? They didn't say how big he was to Lomachenko? But somehow, all of a sudden, Devin Haney's too, like, stop it. This is the stuff I'm saying, these hypocritical comments that people make, okay? So, I enjoy conversations when we got good dialogue, but I like to address questions that when I feel like you guys are not understanding what I'm saying clearly. So, this is why I'm doing this video. This is strictly for the family, for the subscribers. This is this is not, you know, something I'm doing. I don't even have to make this video. I do it because you guys interact with me and I want you to hear what I'm saying so you understand what I'm telling you because, like I said, it's too much to type. But, yeah, I mean, you got to always look at these things, man. It's, it's like you, you can't... That's like saying, I don't believe these dudes are bloods. 
they out here killing people and shooting people and doing all this, man. I don't understand this stuff, right? But you best friends with a crip. Oh, it's different because he's a crip? <laughs> no. You can't bash one fighter and praise another for doing the same shit. And we forget through time. That's why sometimes we got to dig into the archives and bring things up. You know, at the end of the day, y'all, it, it, it's just something that you got to understand. That's why even before, if you guys remember, I did like maybe two or three videos addressing this franchise championship shit. What is the purpose of the franchise championship if you're not doing anything different from everybody else? It gives you different opportunities than everybody else. So you can't look at what a person has done in the past as if, oh, they done enough. Then retire then if you've done enough. Retire. If there's nothing else left to do, retire. Got to respect Lennox Lewis for that. Because, yeah, for Tally Klitschko, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like he was edging Lewis in that fight. And he wasn't going to give him the, re the rematch, so retire. He retired. So even if somebody said, oh, he was scared of retire, that's why he retired. Okay, well, wouldn't it be better that he just retire versus I'm going to fight a lesser fighter? And try to and try to call that redemption because I'm going to go in there and fight a lesser fighter, beat the brakes off of him to make people forget about what happened with me and Vitaly. Now, people exaggerated. They made it sound like Vitaly just went in there and fucked Lewis up. Lewis was getting his licks too. It was a great fight back and forth. But I felt like Vitaly was getting the better of him. And he rocked Lewis a couple of times too. But it was a great fight. That was one of the fights I was like, yo, Lewis got some dog in him. That motherfucker, they, they was going at it. I liked that fight. I really like that fight, but pretty much, y'all, you know, about to bring this video to an end, man. I just wanted to, you know, to, to let y'all hear what I'm saying so you can understand what Aries is talking about versus just reading something. And, and I think a lot of times people think I be mad when I be typing stuff because I, I, you know, I try to get right to the point and say what I'm saying. I think y'all think I'd be like, motherfucker, like, nah, I'm not speaking with an attitude about any of this stuff. But yeah, I just want you guys to pay attention, man. When I say things... Pay attention, because when you ask me certain things or make certain comments, I'm thinking, all right, you you must didn't watch the whole video, or you must have forgot what I said 20 minutes ago or something, because I go long-winded sometimes. This video is pretty long right here. So anyway, again, and let me say this before I end the video, all right, for like the hundredth time, Canelo is a great fighter. He's been a great champion, okay? You can't take nothing away from him. But if he's going to continue to fight and be the face of boxing, you have to do everything you're supposed to do. That's why you get millions of fucking dollars per fight. Ain't no fucking, oh, he fought this guy, this guy. He still haven't fought and beat many as many world champions as Floyd has. Not even close. You understand what I'm saying? And, and Floyd was 38 when he made his exit strategy. When he left, he retired at, at 38. So he was already planning. So he knew everything he wanted to do. Canelo's 33. So like I said, if he's planning on retiring or something, but even that comment still, that's not acceptable. That's not acceptable. I don't want to fight other Mexicans. Stop that bullshit. Stop that bullshit. Charlo, all of them. These guys are all good fighters. But if you doing stuff that I feel is some bullshit, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm not a fan of nobody's. I like these guys as fighters. But I'm not going to sit back and be like, nah, man, you got to give him a pass. No, a pass for what? No, no. And when you hear me comparing Floyd's situation, this is what I'm, you got to look at the situation. Not just so much what they did, but why they did it and the time that they did it. That's what you gotta, that's what people are overlooking. That's what they're overlooking. They're not, they're not looking at the details. So, you know, that's why, I, like when I said, be fighting American or fight. Look, you don't think it's possible that Andre Berto would have fought American and American that weak ass chin? Andre Berto clip him and he go, you know, Khan had no chin. You really think American would have beat? Uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather well he you know like I said that's a guy Pacquiao never fought either same with Kell Brook same exact thing same exact thing and the reason why Pacquiao beat Keith Thurman was because he's better than Thurman he always was better than Thurman and I felt like Floyd and Keith on um, Pacquiao were the two best fighters and Marquez is older than both of them and I believe like in Marquez's prime 
Marquez, in my opinion, he beat those guys that he lost to. Not Floyd and Pacquiao, but those, those other guys. Tim Bradley and, you know, the guys who got him when he got older. I, I don't think none of them beat him in his prime. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just want y'all, like I said, pay attention to what I say, man. Like, understand. See, when I talk, I don't do this filtering shit. Let me be careful with trying to... No, no, no. I'm going to say it exactly how I feel. Because when I watch them something and it turns me off, I got to be real about it. I can't sit back and, nah, well, it's probably because and try to make excuses. Bullshit, man. Bullshit. We keep it real. And y'all know that. So, I got a video I'm going to do probably when I get back here. And that'll be on something else. But I just wanted to address y'all and, 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 and let y'all understand like where I'm coming from with all of this. Every fighter has a story. And there's no one fighter, dead or alive, that fought everybody. I know we hear that term, he fought everybody. No, there's always a fight that didn't happen. We just don't always know why the fight didn't happen. So, everything is not a duck either. But when you come out your face and clearly say, why not fight Sean Porter? Why not take the easy route and fight Sean Porter? He got a belt too. Is that not self-exclamatory? What's different, you know, about that? <laughs> You're clearly ducking. I don't want to fight another Mexican fighter. If Ramirez wins, I'm not going to fight Ramirez because he's Mexican. If Bebo loses, I'm not going to fight him. Why would you care if Bebo loses or not? Bebo beat your ass. And then you're not going to fight Ramirez. Mm, okay. Ramirez, he don't agree with it. He spoke about it. Andy Ruiz said, he, 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 he no, man, fighting Mexican fighters. And I'm like, man, Mexican, whoever, whatever, African you know what I mean, Dominican, German, whatever, a tough fighter is a tough fucking fighter, simple, fuck all that pride shit, bottom line, he knows, and, 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 and I believe what Andy Ruiz is saying, but the point of what I'm saying is, you know, the, you know they could afford that 160, Charlo was calling Canelo out when he was at 160, and that's facts, he was calling him out, and, and, and this shit never happened, so this is what I'm saying, he's not Mexican, Andre is not Mexican. Could afford both of them. Now, when you say that neither one of them has done nothing, well, here's my thing with Andre. Andre resume is weak because these guys don't want to fight him. How the fuck can you have an A-list you, you, you know, resume when the A-list guys don't want to fucking fight you? And I called Charlo out on that bullshit. So Andre, what, 35, 36? That motherfucker's looking for an exit strategy too. He, yeah, of course he wants a payday. Who the fuck doesn't want a payday? Of course, they all want a fucking payday. That's why they fight. So, yes, he wants a fucking payday. So, the guy that you named, yeah, he's probably not looking at him because he's like, man, my, my sights are set over here. I'm trying to do this. They have different goals, different times. Simple. You got a brother or a sister? I'm pretty sure whatever their goals is and not your exact, not, not your goal, but y'all both work, right? Y'all both trying to accomplish things. You want a house. You want this. You want that, right? It's not the same exact thing. It's not identical. But yeah, of course, nobody want to fight you. Yeah, you're going to have a tough time uh, um, um, building um, um, an A-list resume. They want, they have to want to fight you. Errol Spence was that guy at one point nobody wanted to fight until Errol Spence got a belt and started building his profile up. And that's how you know. When a guy who, who who all of a sudden now, nobody want to fight you, but now somebody want to step up, yeah. Yeah, they want that payday. They going to get more money fighting you than anybody else in the division at the time. Of course. And keep farming, like you know. I'm gonna say that for something else, but you gotta you gotta look at what's going on. You can't just look at what somebody is doing and not understand what's the motive, what's going like. Why is this? And when you compare, you gotta. It's a difference. Like people say, Holyfield waited for Mike Tyson to get old before he. What the fuck you mean he waited for him to get old? Man, I I didn't talked about that before. That's but that's pure bullshit. Not to mention Holyfield's four fucking years older than Mike Tyson. Same with Lewis. It's not their fault Mike went to prison. It's not their fault that Mike... Why, why Mike never fought David Tua? Why Mike Tyson never fought Riddick Bo? Why? I don't know. Why he never fought Tommy Morrison? Why didn't he fight George Foreman when George Foreman came back at 37, 38 and started... You see this condition get up and he started looking impressive. And why didn't he fight him? I don't know. But why didn't he fight them? Why didn't he ever fight Chris Bird? Why didn't he fight James Tony? See, I can 
I can dig into this shit because this is what I'm talking about. People always say this guy fought everybody, that guy fought everybody. No, they didn't fight everybody. Morrison and Holyfield never fought. Tua and Holyfield never fought. Razor Ruddick and Holyfield never fought. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's a whole lot of shit you got to look at, man. And analyze it. You want to analyze it correctly. man. So I took this time to address this video, to make this video so I could answer some of these questions and comments and so y'all can hear where I'm coming from. I salute y'all. I thank y'all for the comments. But understand, again, this is not about tearing down any particular fighter. But the bullshit that they do, I got to call them out on it. I can't sit here and, oh, yeah, man, I give him props for this and this and this. Then you saying bullshit, and I'm going to sweep under the rug because, well, look at what he's done. Nah. Anyway, that's all I got for y'all. Never fall in love with lies. Remember the truth brings hate out of people. And I will catch y'all on the next video.